It is a beautiful Tuesday afternoon somewhere on the Garonne. So uh, it's been a good day actually. It's baking hot. It is absolutely baking. The temperature inside the boat is 32 degrees Celsius, which is something. I think that's a record. No, it was 32 before. Um, we got the solar panels back on, uh, which is good. So we're making electricity through the sun to make ice. <laughs> the ice <laughs> to cool us down. Just a nice cruisy afternoon. We've arrived in this little town called Montesh just in time for the summer solstice and to celebrate they've got a music night Fet de Musique with uh, a band and dancing and it's just so charming that I can't even take it. Beautiful. So yes, good morning. It is the beginning of Heatwave Week um, in southwest France. Meteorologists say this June heatwave will possibly break previous national all-time records in France before Friday. We are observing the weather uh, since 1833 uh, and we never experienced this kind of temperatures. A heat wave of this amplitude so early in the year in June is exceptional, but we should expect more intense and frequent heat waves with climate change because it will accentuate the extremes. It will get hotter, I'm talking about uh, record breaking temperatures and it's already deemed historic. Obviously we're inland now, uh, which means that we have not a lot of sea breeze, in fact no sea breeze at all, so we, it does get quite stiflingly hot. But in other news, my sunglasses died yesterday. Ah, oh, everyone is going to spend a moment, take a minute to grieve the sunglasses. And now we are heading to the town of Moissac. We have about 150 kilometers left, so just over 100 miles until we're through the last lock. I think that we'll be in the Atlantic, or at least in the River Garonne, which is it empties into the Atlantic and is um, our last stop before kind of going into the Atlantic itself, within a week. Hopefully, we're aiming for within a week. Um, we need to get some big days done. Yeah, we're going to have some long days, I think, we'll to achieve off. that. But uh, within a week, we'll be getting a mast, well at least in the marina where we're going to get a mast re-stepped or stepped. It's just stepped isn't it? It's not re-stepped. Stepped or unstepped. Yeah, a mast stepped. And yes, for the, that entire week we are I think going to be very very warm indeed. It's definitely going to be a warm week. But that's okay. That's fine. It's beautiful in the morning actually isn't it? It's really pleasant in the morning. It's just uh, in the evening that it gets unbearable. I'm about to do uh, the twisty pole thing which gives us access to the lock. And I think we've got about six locks today. But because they're all downhill, they're uh, so much easier than the, the locks that we've done up till now. So off we go. Middle of the road It's just a feeling of a distant melody Unknown. I was doing fine. I minded my own business till the day you took me home. You came into my life like a sweet embrace, swept me on the beach. The Canal de Garonne is much quieter than the Canal du Midi. So, uh, yeah, it's a completely different atmosphere, really, because in Canal du Midi, we were surrounded by vineyards and there were lots of hire boat bases, there were lots of hire boats with um, people on them that uh, kind of are varying degrees of expertise. And um, there were lots and lots of little towns and villages to stop at every, probably, I don't know, five, ten kilometres, there would be somewhere um, to stop if you wanted to. There was kind of a lot going on on the side of the canals um, but here it's much much more serene it's uh, the canals are lined with mature plane trees which was not the case in the Canal du Midi so it's got a completely different kind of um, aesthetic to it 
it's much shadier which is lovely when it's 32 degrees in the afternoon um, and it just seems much kind of slower and quieter and the fact that we feel like we've got the canals to ourselves just about um, really adds to that 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 sense of um, just serenity because yeah we're not fighting against all these high boats we're just going to the locks by ourselves there's not even any ecclesias the locks are all automatic um, so yes yeah, it's, it's very different it's lovely it's really lovely but I feel like we kind of did the hard yards first we definitely uh, did the more challenging section to begin with and now this is all just super chilled really beautiful uh, scenery and it just feels really rural and uh, and just beautiful just really chilled out so yeah we are loving loving this uh, last probably four or five days on the canals before we get some blue water under our hull again which I have to admit will be really nice Jeez, we've got a bit of an audience. How come the stars come to shine when it's dark from so far away? Show us where we are. What makes the sun go to sleep every night? And what's it dreaming of? Yeah, we've got about 15 meters, we can move up. Just like me, a little bit scared of heights. Why does the rain always keep on pouring down when it's way outside? It really makes me wonder. This must be like the prettiest lot that we've been to yet. Yeah. So we are in a little town called Mwasak and uh, the, I don't think there's much here apart from an abbey, an old monastery, which, uh, hang on, let's see, 10th century, a 10th century abbey, apparently it's a world heritage site and Mwasak is also on the uh, route to Santiago de Compostela which is the pilgrim's route, the old pilgrim's route. So that's what we're going to do this afternoon. We're going to go and have a look at the Abbey, which I'm looking forward to. And tomorrow we are setting off at nine o'clock. We can't leave any early because that's when the locks open and there's a lock right there. And uh, we're going to have a big day tomorrow and a big day the next day and probably a big day for several days after that because France is about to be gripped by a record breaking heat wave. So we are therefore on a bit of a mission to uh, get to the Atlantic because that's going to be our only respite. Uh, getting to the ocean is going to be the only thing that is going to make our, us more comfortable. So when we get there uh, we know that the temperature will drop probably by a solid 7 to 8 degrees according to the forecast and uh, I have to say that, that looks really good right now. So we are basically just going to gun it. We're really looking forward to getting out but also I think we're going to miss the canals a lot. We know that this is not going to be our last time on the canals. We're definitely going to do the canals again. Whether that's t sometime soon in this boat or whether it's in the distant future in a different boat. Um, 
who knows but this is definitely just set us up for another canal adventure at some point in our future you had me at Cause where you go is where I go I don't need nobody else I got you And you got me too This is lovely This is lovely You can ride out of the blue I wanna do what you want to We can leave and run away So monks lived here from the 9th century, so that's some years, 1100 years ago. This is the oldest cloister in the world. No. Yes. The oldest cloister in the world. All the cloisters, all the cloisters you could possibly visit, this is the oldest. Never has there been an older cloister. Yes, apparently according to the legend, it's a world heritage site. But the cloister is 900 years old. There have been monks here for longer. Yes, yeah, so there have been monks here for the two, first 200 years, no cloister. They were okay with no cloister. 200 years after they got it, like, something is missing here. What shall we build? We are build this beautiful cloister. <laughs> and that's what they did. 200 years with no cloister, 900 years with a cloister. And what was the purpose of the cloister? It allows um, thoughtful meditation while moving around the cloister. So it's basically just a nice space for the monks to be. It's a nice space, yeah. Yeah. Plus there's obviously like softball in the square, the old, uh, the old monk barbecue, mead and honey, <laughs> bring your own mead, <clears throat> bring your own honey. No, it's a, it's a religious, I mean, yeah, okay, joking aside, if you look at all these, um, all the columns, all the columns are inscribed with different um, scenes and different figures. From, I think this actually tells you what they all do. If you look at them. Yeah, so look, every single one, every single top of every column has a different um, relief. It's called a relief. It has a relief. And so, what do the reliefs uh, signify? Well, different things. Normally, well, they're all biblical things. So you start with number one in the West Gallery. <laughs> We've dropped the ball here because I don't know which gallery we were in. <laughs> but uh, this one here, City of Babylon, Birds in Combat. Birds in Combat? It's pretty cool. Let's go upstairs. Where did the address? <laughs> <laughs> Stop it. Here, you're going to have that. Oh, I can't. Stop it. That organ is a thousand years old. No. Uh -huh. That's nuts. That's all held up by that ring of rock. You pull one rock out, it'll fall down. No, it's stood for like, for what, almost, what, 900 years, so mm -hmm. I'm hoping that it doesn't crush down today. <laughs> Do what Cersei and James <laughs> There's a lot of fat in these sausages. Oh! <laughs> so, so much for my nice uh, shots of the sunset. Mm -hmm. Huh? They're all going to be like smoky haze. It's nice, look at that, there's a million shot. It's sort of like adding a bit of a dramatic pause. No, it just looks like something's on fire. The gas has been off for like five minutes. It's just burning in its own fat. I like smoky sausages. Yeah, I reckon. I actually do like smoking sausages, so you're in luck. And I'll tell that to the camera. French fries. Our last week of French fries. Good morning everyone. We are leaving Wasak now. Nice and early in the morning. Lovely and warm already. 
and uh, first we are waiting for a pedestrian bridge to be lifted. I think it's actually a swing bridge. So there's a bridge keeper in a little uh, cabin and we're just waiting to go through. But this is a really, really beautiful setting for the canal. It just goes straight through this town and it's gorgeous. Good morning, never a dull day here. It's 9am uh, and we are on the run. We're on the run from the heat of all things. Uh, normally we try and kind of like get off early, but um, because apparently France is going to be hit by the hottest weather it's ever had in June and we are stuck right in the middle of it. Um, we're trying to get to the uh, Atlantic within the next three days to try and get some cool breeze. It doesn't, the heat doesn't bother me as much, but Therese, you know, being the Australian that she is, can't deal with it too well. So, um, yes, we're going to try and do some long days. Uh, last night by 5 p.m. it was sweltering in the boat. Today's going to be hotter, tomorrow hotter still, and Thursday is going to be crazy hot. The Canal de Garonne is actually quite different to the Canal du Midi. And um, the difference is that, the, the most tangible difference is that the locks are a different shape. So the Canal du Midi has uh, round locks or curved locks, I guess. Um, I'm not entirely sure why they built it like that. I assume it was because they, they thought that following the shape of the barges, the curved shape of the barges uh, would be the best way of building the locks, but I'm, I'm not actually 100% sure. But for us, it presented a challenge, of course, because, uh, yeah, the curved wall uh, was far less easy to park against than, um, than just a straight wall. But the locks on this canal are straight. They, they're just, uh, it's just like parking up next to any dock. And uh, because we're going down, we're entering the lock at the same level. So we don't have to, or at the highest level. So we don't have to uh, drop anyone off, so that, anyone being me, um, so that they can take the lines or anything. We just park the boat as we normally would with any other kind of maneuver and, uh, and, and away we go. The other difference is that the, uh, the locks on this canal are all automatic. So there's twisty poles, which are usually about, I don't know, about maybe 200 meters from the lock itself. And they just hang down, they're just suspended and they just hang down and they activate the lock. And then once we're in the lock and all sorted, then we go and press the button and the lock, uh, it does the rest for us. So, that's the main difference and it's good because it is a little bit more expedient. It helps that there's not much traffic on this canal. It's a lot easier and because we're going down uh, we don't have to worry so much about the mast because um, there's not the turbulence in the water that there is when the lock is filling. When the lock is emptying it, the water level just, just drops. So we can easily manage the, the two ends of the mast and it's not, uh, it's not really a problem. Both canals are, are fantastic for different reasons. The Canal de Garonne is much quieter, um, the locks are more manageable, but you know, then again, I kind of miss the challenge of the locks on the Canal du Midi because it was fun, you know, Nick dropping me off and me having to do my kind of, I don't know, six time daily sprint up to the lock and then take the lines and you know, it was all very dirty, sweaty, physical work. And uh, it, was, it was fun, it was challenging, but it was fun. It was very active, which I liked. This is much more, lazy, <laughs> which I also like. Can you give me a bit of bow thruster?
Well, here we are. We've uh, pulled over for the night uh, somewhere just outside of Argon. And a uh, nice little spot, very quiet, just a little kind of park and a playground next door. And uh, most importantly, we have electricity. That was our number one priority. And it is seven o'clock at night and it is still so hot. <laughs> I'm cooling myself down with a glass of chilled rosé. Uh, we can't stand to be on the boat because even with all the fans going and our fan cooler, which is more fan than cooler, unfortunately, is still about 34 degrees inside the boat. Um, so yes, we're outside waiting for the boat to cool down. And uh, you know, the sun doesn't set until about I don't know, 10.30, 10, 10.30. So it uh, doesn't get cooler until about midnight. So we're kind of, that's our schedule at the moment. We go to bed late and we, we sleep in a little bit. I'm hot, it is hot. This just in, it is apparently 49 degrees in the sun. Oh. <laughs> There's an algae bloom because of all the hot weather lately. Babe, I can see weed getting sucked into the bow thruster. Don't use the bow thruster. There's something going on. Yeah, there's stuff like there's something around the prop as we speak. I think we've got an engine problem, babe. We're so close to the end. 